Hi everyone, Quickshow14 here. Hopefully, a quick uh, tutorial, uh, kind of a quest request. I know it's pretty old. Uh, it was posted on the 18th of May, and I know there's actually some other tutorials out there to talk about this, but I'm going to try to go over it kind of quickly uh, and point you guys in some right directions of some other video tutorials that you might want to take a look at. Uh, this one, of course, is how I'd like to request a tutorial, tutorial about uh, figuring out how to create new conditions, action definitions, and functions. Uh, and also what an array variable is and what they're best used for. Uh, so, uh, the action definitions, functions, things like that is actually quite useful. This is my own Canon Wars map. Again, uh, be on the lookout for future videos if they're not already out about information, more information about this map and what it is. I will be releasing it out to you guys so you can actually take a really good look at it uh, uh, roughly when those first videos hit. So if it's already out, be on the look for it. Uh, if not, uh, yeah, or if it's already out, find it here on my channel, or of course you can uh, just keep an eye on it. And of course, I'll post probably in uh, on SC2 Mapster the actual link and all that, and probably even upload it there. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> function definitions and 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 or function definitions and action uh, action definitions and all this different stuff. What the heck is this crap? Uh, anyone who's done Warcraft 3 remembers uh, when you're doing triggers. Uh, you usually had multiple triggers almost doing the same thing, setting up specific conditions and then having a whole bunch of if then else's for more specific conditions. It was a mess. It, it makes things slow and it makes things uh, very cumbersome. Uh, it, basically, all action definitions are, all condition definitions are, all functions are, are all functions. They're just all basically calls of functions to do pretty much anything you want. Event definitions. I tried messing around with that. I can't seem to get it working. I don't know if we can make our own yet, and unfortunately, we can't. I can't see how uh, Blizzard did theirs, unfortunately. So, uh, mainly, there's just no information there. So, I, I can't. We're really not sure how that works, but it's very, very useful because something that could be a nested if can now be turned into four or five different functions. Now, it takes more work to do that, granted, but you're going to one. You're going to save time in the long run. Uh, it's going to be easier for you to read and follow, Mo and reusability, you'll be able to reuse it as you like, and most importantly, it's easy to change, and it's also a lot easier to debug. Uh, anybody who's not really that familiar with programming, or is, is rather new to programming, or has no program experience, gets lost when it comes to stuff like this pretty easily. So I'm going to try to just give a basic example of what these are, and what, what they're talking about and then point you guys in the right direction for more in-depth information because there's some really good video tutorials that was done by uh, by someone on YouTube that, that'll that give you much more in-depth so this is just going to be a basic overview, basic taste and for more details and a more step-by-step because -step, I will show a little bit because I don't have much time here but step-by-step -step, uh, of how the, these kind of things are done so as you can see here I'm really split up on, on my my game here, I'm in the process of actually, I just finished rewriting most of my old triggers into these new functions and actions. So let's just, uh, I got a new action here that I've started real quick. And to create one, you just simply go new, and it's right here, action definition. You have event definitions. Again, we really haven't figured out how that works or if it's really implemented on the GUI side yet for us to use yet. So for right now, uh, until either we figure it out or we get more details on that or it actually becomes, or we get documentation or whatever. Uh, just ignore it for now. Condition definitions are pretty straightforward. Action definitions and functions. Uh, condition and action definitions, basically conditions is going to return usually uh, a boolean, true or false, usually. You know, it, it, so you're checking something. So for condition definitions, say you want to check and see if a vari variable uh, it is equal to 1. You could set up a new condition definition uh, that returns true or false if that boolean is equal to 1. And it, it gets written just like a normal uh, trigger, really. Uh, it's very, very simple. Uh, new action definition usually doesn't return anything. You just want it to do something. And a new function is usually uh, something that returns something. It could be any anything from returning a unit or a unit group uh, and things like that. What makes these all very powerful, condition, action, and functions, is they're able to take in information as well, and they can return information. And that's what makes them very powerful. So real quick, I'm going to show you a quick... A uh, little uh, condition here. I have a simple little condition. Uh, the ret most conditions always return booleans. Usually want it to, and it's taking two information. It's taking a player and a preset. Uh, basically, the preset is whether it's expanded or shrunk, 
and it's going to return whether it's true or false. So what we do is I simply check. Uh, as you can see, I have, this is a custom uh, custom uh, action here. Or uh, this is a con uh, sorry <laughs> custom uh, condition here, and it's basically saying, okay, is this expanded or shrunk? Uh, yes or no. You know, I think I made a mistake here. No, I didn't. Never mind. Sorry. Uh, basically saying, okay, if the dialog basically is what I'm looking at. If if it's boolean, it's variable uh, called state is either true or false. Uh, and if it's equal to this, which is also basically a preset that says true or false, if those are both equal, then I want you to say, okay, return true. In other words, the condition's valid. Go ahead and proceed. Otherwise, return false. The condition is not valid. Do not proceed. Pretty simple. You stick this in any other it, same place in the if here, or any other if that you're going to use it in, and it works just like any other condi condition. Uh, not too difficult, really. It's just figuring out how that works. Obviously, the information you want to pass and the information is information that you might need to to get. So, uh, especially in this case, I'm trying to pick from a, a variable. Now, I have another action here, or a function, actually. I'm sorry. Uh, this is a function, which basically is getting the dialog state, and that's what this is. The get power dialog state is that same same function, and basically it's passing. It takes player, and then it returns state. And it's very simple. It just it gets my variable power dialog state takes player as the first part of the array so I have a, a 1 and 2 and if it's equal to true then hey return it's expanded you know otherwise return it's shrunk uh, and that returns it back and that's what it does so pretty simple right now I'm pretty much creating my own action text uh, action stuff for doing specific things on my dialog and in this case this one's actually going to be for updating the uh, uh, dialog item and its progress bar now it's not a real progress bar dialog item it's actually the, an image and we're just gonna shrink or expand the width based off the uh, value basically to give the the, the impression of a progress bar and this will allow you to have more control over the color and, and other attributes uh, than the the default uh, dialog item progress bar that's in there so just information on that so uh, whoops um, hint text is that same hint text you see when you pick it on the GUI and this is, I, I am running out of time it just simply updates it Parameters. It's going to be taking obviously the player. You know which which player dialog is this going to do? You know and and who should it be? So you you set up your parameters. You add anything that you need to. Usually new element and and you can name it how you want. It's just a variable. That's all it is. I can put a minimum and maximum value since there's only two players in this map. I want the default value to be one. I want the minimum to be one and two. I don't want them to be able to pick any more than that. So it allows you to control some of those aspects. Next thing we want is we need to know what type of dialog it is. I have a preset set up for that in order to uh, do that easily. And I'll try to go into those in maybe another tutorial uh, more in depth because presets are quite powerful uh, if used properly. My apologies, I'm trying to find it. There it is, power dialog items. Let me give this a, a valid name dialog item. And the last thing I want to do. is uh, is value. And value is basically just the progress bar how far it's supposed to be. So I'm just going to do a simple if then else and the reason I'm doing this is because I actually want to do two things really quick. I want to check um, that one what we're modifying here the actual dialog item is valid for what we're trying to do here. In this case we want to make sure that our dialog item is an image because that's what we're using to emulate uh, a progress bar so I'm gonna set that right here and I guess this will be over two parts uh, I didn't want it to be but I guess it will be so the first thing we want to do is find out is this a dialog item so I'm going to check 
okay, uh, is this a dialogue item? <sighs> Sorry, or is this a, uh, a dialogue type? That's what I'm after. As soon as I find it. There it is, dialogue item type. And we want to check, okay, the parameter. We're ticking in our dialogue item. Uh, so, what we'll go ahead and do. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. This is a custom function I created to find out if. Uh, what our dialogue item is and maybe I'll show that since it looks like we have time now since I've gone over anyway my apologies for that in fact we will go ahead and go over more of this in part two